When I first decided to start going on patrols and whatnot, uh, my first 19 patrols were actually all in plain clothes. Um, I um, didn't know what to expect and stuff at first, but um, I didn't make my first um, anonymous arrest until approximately about my seventh or eighth patrol out. And that was when it dawned on me that this could actually work. I just randomly wandered around my neighborhood. Didn't know what I was doing really. Didn't know what I was looking for. And I thought I was the only person doing this. I didn't know that there was a community. A real life superhero is somebody who basically takes the morals and ethics as well as the visual perspective of the comic book style superhero and basically embraces it by doing positive works in their local communities and in the world at large. My name is Motor Mouth. I am a real life superhero slash costumed activist based out of Oakland, California. I am the team leader of the Northern California Protectorate, which is a subset of the Pacific Protectorate, a team which spans from British Columbia all the way to the Mexican-American border. Real life superheroes have been around since the 70s. However, it hasn't been until recently that movies and comics such as Kick-Ass have spread the awareness of this culture, and the increase of social media has given them a way to organize and compare what it means to be a costume activist throughout the world. I heard about it on the news. I saw Mortarmouth, and um, it, it kind of inspired me more. Like it flared up and I thought, wait a second, there's more, you know, I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay, maybe a little bit, but you know, it's not that, you know, it's not that crazy of an idea to be anonymous, to try to be anonymous and try to help people, you know, and, and try to do it in the least violent way and try to help people in the most calm and, and affectionate way possible. This is a story that only a couple people know because they remember it. I uh, woke up at the 1.30 in the morning and I had a neighbor that used to beat up his girlfriend. So I put on my gear and I honestly hop a couple fences, get to their house um, and I'm in front of it and I see them and the lady's trying to get out of the house. The guy's holding the door. So I bang on the door, he opens it and he starts coming out like, you know, ticked off. And uh, I know I shouldn't have, but at the time I didn't know what I was doing. It was my first time doing this. I grabbed him, I flipped him on the ground, I slammed him on his head, and then um, I left. <laughs> the police came, they picked him up. She had to go to the hospital because apparently he fractured her skull. When I suit up, the one thing I'm most afraid of more than anything else is not so much failure on the streets, but letting my teammates down. Because to me, my teammates are my base. I mean, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for them. A lot of times, in a, um, what keeps a lot of real life superheroes and costumed activists organized in their little partnerships or teams or whatever you want to call it, um, there's usually a linchpin in the group that usually, or the pairing, that usually kind of pulls the folks together. In my case, personally, over the years, um, I've been um, kind of a pack mule of sorts where um, if I have a patrol in Sacramento going on and stuff and I want to bring some guys from the Bay Area, I'll drive down to Campbell or I'll drive down to Mountain View, pick some guys up, and then drive all the way back to Oakland, pick some more guys up, and then drive all the way up to Sacramento. Working in a team is pure and simple. It's a lot more fun than being out there walking around by yourself. Any, any one of us that you ask will, will tell you the same thing, that, well, for one, you have somebody to watch your back. My name's Richard McCaslin, and I operate as the real-life superhero called Phantom Patriot. I personally wear a costume so that it identifies me as, I guess, you well, the term superhero. Um, if you dress a certain way, uh, people identify you with a certain job or a certain purpose. So this is a Condor vest, a compact vest. Um, this is actually a level 3A enhanced um, vest. I have my steel, stainless steel bracers right here. Um, the gloves are actually custom made. I had them made by a custom leather shop on the internet. Typically I have titanium plates in here, a quarter of an inch thick. These are um, standard SWAT tactical boots and stuff, LAPD issue and stuff. It's got a steel shank, steel toe, steel embedded heel. I have my uh, tactical knee pads. Um, the pants, uh, these are SWAT issue BDUs 
and stuff. Usually most police departments around the world use these. So underneath, I have a three hole ball glove. And then I wear a ballistic face mask. Um, the mask is just a standard you know, neoprene mask, nothing special about it. And then I have my very handy dandy lucky smiley face. Um, tools of the trade vary. Um, it can be everything from um, a Leatherman pocket kit to tasers and stuff. Um, I personally have started, um, via help from a family member of mine, have been starting to put first aid kits together, basically, that the um, team that I work with can actually carry in the field, basically, on their person. So that way, it's just kind of like a grab-and-go pack. As you can see, I have a flashlight on here. Put tasers, mace, anything. I could even put an overvest. Um, some of them. Only the ones that I thought could handle it. Uh, apparently, a couple of them can't. But uh, there's a few of them that can handle it, and there's a lot of them that cannot. And the ones that cannot, I just pretend I'm out partying or something. Um, I remember when I first, you know, came out of the masked closet, as I say, to my family, and I explained to them what I do. They thought I was batshit crazy. They thought, like, you're gonna get killed, you're gonna get hurt. But when they realized that I was, you know, being very methodical, they realized that I was actually being serious about it. And that's when they decided to actually back me up. And until this day, my parents and my immediate family are probably my greatest supporters in what I do. We live in an age basically where, you know, people have just given up. People don't care anymore about anything, whether it be the environment, about their fellow man, nothing. Nobody cares. And, you know, we need a big change in society towards that. And I would like to think that people such as myself and people and like-minded folks doing this are part of that change. You know, we're trying to remind society to wake up and tell them that, you know, you don't, you know, need to be Superman to be able to save the world. You know, everybody can have their part in doing it. Remember when I said hip hop was dead? He must have not ever been to the West. He must have thought we couldn't hop a fence. We was all up in that graveyard, digging up a mess. Now I'm cleaning off my kicks, having fun with it, leaving with respect. When I'm done with it, you can smell it on my breath. I've been eating all along since before y'all showed up. Now it's halfway gone. It's a West Side cookout. Grab a plate, give thanks, tell me how we taste. Invite your folks from around the way, cause everything's better when it's homemade. It's a West Side cookout. Grab Grab a plate, uh, give thanks, tell me how it tastes, uh, invite them girls from around the way, uh, cause everything's better when it's homemade. I had a barbecue stain on my white tee, she was killing me in those Nikes, <laughs> kinda tiny, so I asked for her ID, it said she was 19, nice and tidy, it's on site with them I